Hey everyone, this is Donna, the Technology and Media Librarian at the Upper Arlington Public Library. I'm here today with another video in our technology series, and this is about Microsoft Word 2016 tips and tricks. So this is a condensed version of our Word series that we held in person earlier this spring, and what I did was pull some of my absolute favorite Word resources and put them together in this video so that you can enhance the documents that you're creating and working on. So while I wouldn't say that this is a comprehensive overview of everything we would cover in our Word Basics, Intermediate, and Advanced courses, what I would say is that these are fantastic tips to know about when you're using Word that just might streamline the process for you, make things a little bit easier, and just help you feel more comfortable when you're using Word. So let's go ahead and get started. For my very first tip, Use the shortcut menu that you produce when you use the right click on your mouse. The right click will produce a shortcut menu that will allow you to change the font, change your font size, paragraph styles and spacing. You can even add different styles to your text so you can apply headings and subtitles to whatever you've highlighted. When you highlight the text and use the right click, to get that shortcut menu, what you're doing is finding resources that are relevant to the text that you've highlighted. In this case, it's hyperlink, for example. Um, and this just saves you some time from going up to the home tab and then going to each of those font groups or paragraph groups. It's right there immediately once you hit right click. My next tip is to use the white arrow cursor in order to drag and highlight your text. On the left side of your document, you'll see a white arrow appear. When you see that, click the left button on your mouse and begin dragging along that side of the document and you will highlight everything as you continue to drag. If you see the white cursor, you can also double click and that will highlight the paragraph that is directly next to that cursor. So it does save you a little bit of time and some steps when it comes to selecting. It doesn't require you to use your keyboard and it doesn't require you to insert the cursor. You just need to see the white arrow, click, drag, or double click to highlight a paragraph. Tip number three is to use the clipboard in order to cut and copy non-sequential text. Typically when we cut, we'll paste immediately after. When we copy, we'll paste immediately after. And that's so you don't lose track of what text you've cut and what text you've copied and inadvertently paste the wrong section. With the clipboard, you can actually cut copy at whatever pace you'd like to and then paste wherever you need to without worrying about losing track of what's been cut or copied. And here's how that'll work. So you'll go up to the clipboard group in your home tab and click on the arrow in the lower right corner of that group. And when you do that, you'll see the clipboard pops out on the left side of your screen. Once you see the clipboard, you can begin highlighting and then cutting or copying your text. So we'll highlight go up to the home tab and cut, or you can use control X on your keyboard. Then you can highlight and you can copy or use control C on your keyboard. And whatever you've cut and copied will appear on the clipboard. And now you can insert your cursor anywhere in your document and paste as needed. So we'll go down to the bottom of that last paragraph. We'll insert our cut text. We'll insert our copy text. You can also, from the clipboard, paste all at once. You can clear the clipboard so that it's completely empty and ready for you to start cutting and copying again. And you can select each individual cut or copy and delete it as needed. Tip number four is to insert page breaks if you need to start a new page. Page breaks are a cleaner and more efficient way to add a new page to your document. Now, hitting the enter button multiple times to start a new page is definitely effective, but it's not necessarily efficient because it can lead to formatting errors later, especially if you need to insert new text, insert images, and so forth. Instead, you can insert a new page and start completely fresh by going up to the insert tab at the top of your screen and then selecting the insert page break in that pages group and that will insert a new page wherever you have placed your cursor.
Tip number five is to use Format Painter. If you would like to copy and paste the formatting for a heading, a title, or other text that has great formatting applied without copying and pasting the text altogether, what you'll do is highlight the text whose format you'd like to copy. Once you've highlighted it, go up to the Home tab and then the Clipboard group and click that Format Painter button. Then you'll scroll down to the text where you'd like to apply the formatting. And as you place your cursor in front of that text to highlight it, you'll see there's a little paintbrush next to the cursor. Go ahead and highlight that text. And when you're done highlighting, it will automatically apply the formatting. If you need to insert images into your Word document to enhance the document, all you'll need to do is go up to the Insert tab and click on that Pictures button. That will open up a dialog box so that you can search your computer or external storage for an image that you have saved and automatically insert that image into your document where your cursor is. From there, you can resize the image by clicking on the resize handles in the four corners. If you need to change how your text flows around your image, you can click the wrap text button. You can also crop your images so that you can resize not only the image itself, but the sides of it by clicking on the crop handles on the four sides of your image. You can even crop your images to a particular shape. So in this case, I've selected an oval and that image has cropped into the oval space and then you can move it around as needed. But don't forget the adjust group where you can reset your picture to the way it used to look. You can change the color. You can change some of the style options. Here I'm gonna pick like a sepia tone for my image. Um, you can remove the background on your images. So you do have a lot of image formatting options once you've inserted and selected an image into your document. And that includes borders, that includes shadows. Even though Microsoft Word is not a photo editing software the way that Photoshop is, it does give you some options for how you'd like to treat an image once it's been inserted into your document. You can also insert screenshots. What you can do is position your cursor where you want to paste a screenshot and then go up to the Insert tab again. And this time you're going to click on the Insert Screenshot button and select that insert screen clipping option. And when you return to Word, it will automatically insert the area that you have screenshotted into your document where your cursor is placed. If you want to adjust the margins on your document, first make sure your ruler is visible. So you'll go up to the view tab and then click ruler to make sure that ruler is checked and you can see the ruler at the very top of your document. Next, place your cursor in the paragraph whose margins you'd like to adjust. In this case, we're gonna change the first paragraph. And in the ruler, click on the small square that represents the left indent. And as you're clicking on that square, drag it to the right in order to adjust your left margin. You can also click on the right triangle at the very end of the ruler and drag that to the left in order to adjust your right margin. And you can see what we're doing here is creating something of a block quote effect so that only that very first paragraph has changed its margins. If you need to present information in an organized way in your Word document, you can insert a table, make space in your document, and then insert your cursor where you would like your table to appear, and then click on the Insert tab and select Table from the Tables group. In order to select the number of columns and rows, drag your mouse towards the right to introduce new columns and down to add new rows and then click to select and your table, as you can see, will appear in your document. At this point, you can begin entering text into your table, across the rows and in the columns. And don't forget that you can also insert rows and insert columns just by right clicking in any space in your table so that you can select the insert button from that shortcut menu. And you can see insert columns to the right, to the left, insert rows above and below. Using the styles can format your selected text with just a couple of clicks, while using designs will take those styles, 
for example, heading, title, subtitle, and so forth, and apply pre-selected formats based on the style you've selected. In order to apply a style to your text, highlight the text in question, go up to the Home tab, and then in the Styles group, select a style from that list. You can see some of the available options are Heading 1, Heading 2, Title, Subtitle, and Quote. If you want to apply a design so that you can change the look of the entire document based on the styles that you've applied, go up to the Design tab, and then you can select a design from the list that's currently available. Click on Themes to see different color schemes, fonts, and ways of formatting the titles, the quotes, subtitles, and so forth. Then click on an option in the Document Formatting group, and that will apply a particular design based on the theme that you've chosen so that all of your headings, titles, and so forth are part of a cohesive look. You can change the colors and the fonts for styles and designs so that they look the way that you like, but just know that this option saves you plenty of time so that you don't have to apply specific fonts, colors, and formatting to each section of your document. Styles and designs can do it for you. If you have a longer document for which you would like to create a table of contents to organize each section for your readers or for yourself, don't create one by hand. Let Word do the work for you with styles, but also with the table of contents option. What you'll do is highlight your text where you need to apply headers, subheaders, titles, subtitles, and so forth. Apply those using styles. But then, once you've applied all of your necessary headers, head over to the References tab, and specifically the Table of Contents button. Here you can apply an automatic table of contents that is generated using the headers that you've created. So you can see where we've applied Header 1 to Volume 1 and Heading 2 to Chapter 1. That has now created a table of contents for those sections. If at any point you apply additional headings, you can update your table of contents so that it reflects what the contents of your document is. So click on your table of contents, select update entire table, and you can see the new heading is now listed in that table of contents. And to get to each of those sections, just control on your keyboard and click the number and it'll head directly to that section. If you insert new pages into your document, especially as you continue to type it, go back up to your table of contents, opt to update the pages, and that will reflect any changes that you've made since the table of contents was originally created. In our final tip, we want to let you know that you can save your Word documents as PDF documents if necessary. In order to do so, you'll click on your File menu to access your Save options and choose Save As from the list. Browse on your computer for a space to save your PDF. And then from that Save As Type list, click on the list and select PDF and click Save. You can see that document is now saved on our desktop. So that's it for us when it comes to our favorite word tips and tricks. Um, if you need to reach out with any questions or if you have suggestions for future videos that you'd like to see, contact information for our media services department is on the screen right now. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. And of course, we've linked to some great handouts and other resources in the video description. So be sure to click below for that description to check those out. Thanks so much for watching.